What's good, sweat family? Another day, another video. Uh, in case you're joining in, my name is Martin, the founder of Hyperhydrosis Awareness Kenya. This past weekend, on Friday, we celebrated Eid in a, in a good way. I connected with uh, Dan from Arefisha and we did a Q&A session on antiphoresis machine treatment. And in case you haven't watched the premiere videos today, because we have scheduled videos up to 29th, which I think is on Friday. So each day there is a video. And we addressed the most commonly asked questions, including the frequent Frequently asked questions, the FAQs, they are all there on antiphoresis machine treatment. And trust me, you really don't want to miss watching those videos. Get in there, like, subscribe, learn, and share. It's very important. Is it maswali no when it comes to antiphoresis machine treatment? Like, you know, frequency uh Kufanya sessions, how often should I conduct these sessions? Should I include any form of minerals into those, into my water source? Uh, side effects, which is the best brand? But remember, nimekuwa niki insist sana na nimesema hivi. Ikifika kwa ile brand enye unataka kununua, make sure you go through and uh, ascertain the budget, do the cost anal analysis. Very important. Kozile machine in Yonataka. You see that best performing machine that you want. That machine has a budget. If you want, for instance, come at the fisher. Uneza fanya session, msea kupigie simu, utuwe mikono, wonge na simu, na urudishe na session itendelea. So difference here, all these machines is the features zenye ziko apondani. And so the more the features, the more lazima uko na budget. Right? So for these and more and all the other questions, zenye unazataka kwa, you know, the questions that you have and you want them answered, go to our YouTube channel. Those videos are there. You will learn a lot. Today I want to talk about treatment. Every client that reaches out to HAK and those who I have done the one-on-one -on -one consult, mostly online, and those who have even called me, there is one question in Yenakoga very dominant from most of you. And that question is, can product A or if I buy this topical treatment, will it permanently cure me from my sweat issues? And the question is always no. The answer to that is, is always no. Why? Because topical treatments do not provide a cure or permanent solution. But this is what they do. They will aid in managing and controlling your excessive sweating. So you're not buying a specific product cured of your sweat. And I think this is because we are focused on finding a permanent solution. Now, for most of us, because we have not been exposed to an array of options. So what's the first thing we do? After trials and error, and after even searching online, no, 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 kabisa, Sina, it's like, it's like luck is not on my side. I don't know where to get the treatment. So you become desperate, especially if your focus, your primary focus is permanent solution. I'm looking for a permanent solution. Nico hellbent on Nihio, nothing else. I don't want anything to do with controlling. It's always will it stop me from sweating? And when you get the answer that it won't, then you move to the other treatment. How about Botox? Still the same thing. It won't cure you from your sweat. It will help in managing and controlling. So each treatment has its own level. 
kuna ile yenye iko na extended level extended level for instance if you go for botox botox when done properly can last for within uh, practically they say eight months to one year when done properly na hapa tunaongea about the number of units so the more the units and done properly cause sikudungwa tu na dungwa it's been the injection has to be done at the base level and most medical practitioners will recommend get the botox done botox injection done kwa underarms kwa makwapa of course kuna wenye wame advance wanaweza fanya kwa mikono you know just by making those uh, patterns and then they do the injections but for most certified dermatologists they would recommend highly recommend waifanya kwa the underarms but at the end of the day it is the medical practitioner's advice and you know direction that will also contribute to the effectiveness so topical treatments kuna zenye zinaweza last for about one and a half to two months zingine hata zinaweza nda two and a half months and then kuna zile zenye for instance a pm antiperspirant that is applied three days a week at night only before bedtime that one can even go for eight months yes i do have clients who have bought a pm antiperspirant and it has lasted for eight months in fact they call in to request for another one since wana feel ile nyo natumia it's about to deplete so it's all about each treatment with its extended time extended level of effectiveness per usage so topical treatment inakupatia uh, that level and that extended time it's because it's a short term treatment then you have long term treatment the likes of antifreeze machine and that one only requires tap water and tap water unatumia zile minerals zenye ziko pale and if the water source is not really working to your satisfaction you can change the source so kama unatumia maji ya borehole unaweza jaribu maji ya ya ya, ya tap ya you know ya, ya kanjo you know the municipal council water na wasco nairobi water depending na uh, ile county yenye huko you can use ile maji ya tap if the borehole water is not working change the source you can also try and buy bottled water and if you go through the videos there is a part where dan said you're supposed to use warm water lukewarm to warm water not the cold water lukewarm to warm water na he antiphoresis machine treatment is more of long term because once you have that machine a good machine can even go up to 20 years so it depends with the usage when do unatumia hiyo machine so how are you using the machine and the maintenance also look at the accessories are you using the machine that has aluminum plates or does yours have what you call the silicon graphite uh, electrodes you know for this and more the videos are there and they're going to clear a lot of you know they, they, they're going to give you the much needed answers that you're looking for so yes back to treatment people are always looking for a permanent solution and once they find out that there is no permanent solution i sense a lot of frustration because tunaanza kwenda from one level to the next tena tunaenda hadi uh, medical treatments where we talk of oral medication na hiyo kwanza iko na side effects zake and you know most people don't go through the list you only touch on what is on the base level you need to go deep into understanding prolonged use of certain treatments and your body system as well so you're not just using any treatment like every doctor will uh, for instance like dr hashim vilayeye who patiana the best advice if you're going to apply let's say a facial gel 
just echo a small uh like a pea size to your forearm ama pa komkono and then rub one if it's going to react with your skin then you know you have a sensitive skin you know so for every treatment will depend on your body chemistry hata tukienda kwa hizo levels tunaenda gaivo until we arrive at the most dreaded one surgery i know most of you are drawn so much into surgery because of the way it's been packaged the way they market that surgery as a permanent solution but what they don't tell you is the permanent side effects that come with that surgery compensatory sweating seek to your simchezo should go and check what compensatory sweating is but besides that look at all the other list of the side effects that come with this surgery for you to understand that it is endoscopic thoracic sympathectomy it's like plain russian roulette with your life it's like you're taking chances plain russian roulette eh huh? this uh, russian roulette or russian uh, roulette i don't know my, my english niauko but but either way you're getting the point right you're taking chances with your life and even if they say out of 100 it has worked for 30% kuna very important things like follow ups most of the surgeons of the physicians who have performed the surgery they only do follow ups for about 6 months then it stops lakini wewe mwenye umego under this surgery you're the one to live with the permanent side effects you're the one to deal with the irregular body temperatures you're the one to deal with the host of all the other diseases that comes as a result of the side effect of the surgery we did a video back in 2020 on it years it was a part 1 part 2 coming soon we're just uh, consolidating you're trying to reach out to different people who have done this surgery who are not afraid to speak out to share their stories to give us that journey and you know what pushed them what pushed them to the surgery what made them decide and why and then post surgery how has life been before and after So when it comes to treatment understand first number one, acceptance it's very important accept that you have excessive sweating acceptance is key is very important kubali you have a sweat issue number two, be open to treatments na treatments is in end and levels so when one level is not working we move to the next level but in all these levels do not give up it requires patience it requires time and most of all it requires you to deal with your sweat triggers because you know your sweat triggers besides you know situational anxiety which affects all of us besides uh stress you know emotional issues which this this water we are not exempted to it the difference is how do you manage and how do you cope with emotional issues if the same thing with myself how do i cope with my sweat triggers do i understand my sweat triggers yes has my sweating patterns improved or changed over the years yes what led to that coping mechanisms you have to you have to learn how to cope with your sweat triggers what triggers what what brings about the triggers what triggers that sweat is it an activity is it taking your id or passport public speaking job presentation whichever you have to understand wewe mwenyewe lazima uelewe what triggers my sweat and then when it comes to emotional issues how do i deal with these emotional issues because here's here comes the truth 
another truth. As long as you're alive, you're not exempted to emotional issues. You will always be there. The only time you will not face any form of emotional issue is when you're dead. So as long as you're alive, I normally don't even tell my clients to stop, stop stressing, stop doing. Mm -mm. I always tell my clients, learn how to manage. Keyword, learn how to manage your emotional issues, your stress. If it is a relationship that is causing you a lot of stress and, and anxiety, because you see, when you're stressed, your body automatically switches up to fight or flight. You produce a lot of cortisol. Cortisol is produced as a defense mechanism. The body to protect itself. Because the moment to cause stress, in a tumaga signals in Ambia Mwili, eh, we are under attack. So your nervous system has to protect you. The body has to protect itself. It's a whole process. So if we imagine every day you're under stress, you're under anxiety. Do you think you're going to experience any change in your sweating patterns? No. This is why you sleep and wake up in the morning sweating. And your sweating is not going anywhere because you're stressed. Your body is constantly thinking. Unaipatia umeyeka into that fight or flight every day. That's why even when you buy any form of topical treatments or if you try treatments, hyperhidrosis treatments, whether it's topical, medical, antiphoresis machine, whichever treatment that you opt to go for, at the end of the day, you don't get the results and then you think the treatment is not working. No, the treatment is working. It's just that you're constantly on fight or flight because you're looking for that permanent solution. That is the one solution that you're looking for. So you're not open to try these other treatments because at the end of the day, all these other treatments are not going to give me what I want. What do I want? I want permanent solution. The sweat family. My advice to you, be open to treatments. Understand your sweat. Acceptance, number one, that is very important. And then, if you're going to consult, if you're going to Consult a medical practitioner. Or rather, let me say this. Let me put it this way. If you decide or should you decide that I want to opt for medical treatments, then do a proper research. Make sure that, number one, consult a certified dermatologist and make sure that they have dealt with hyperhidrosis cases before. Because if they haven't, then they're not going to help you. And it's not their fault because out of, in the country, in Kenya that is, the, the dermatologists that are on public domain, if you do a search on like, they're about 28 to 30 when you're on public domain. Na ni wengi, madaktari ni wengi, dermatologist ni wengi. But the question is, ni wangapi ambao wanajua kumanage ama wame provide treatments for hyperhidrosis and other sweat-related issues? Very few. And this does not exempt general physicians. And you can bear with me if you consult a, G a GP, general physician, or a dermatologist who hasn't dealt with hyperhidrosis cases before, the diagnosis they give you is always, there is nothing wrong with you. You're taking a lot of sugar or consuming a lot of salt, sodium. A mother will test you for malaria. They will test you for typhoid. In most cases, they will do they will test you for secondary sweating. But we know how agenda deep into 
the the meat where the issue is so it's very imperative for them to conduct medical test and the rest it's a whole process even before fike kwa medical test they have to do a background check but you see a majority of them they haven't specialized on excessive sweating so they may not know the protocol and my wish is that we can hyperhidrosis awareness Kenya can provide training for some of the dermatologists that we can have a medical forum where we can talk about excessive sweating and how it affects and the effects it has on the quality of life because trust me hyperhidrosis is affecting a lot of people and not just hyperhidrosis we are talking about other sweat related issues because someone who has bromhidrosis their experiences are not the same as someone suffering from excessive sweating because bromhidrosis is excessive sweating with odor and there are other sweat issues that a lot of people are facing but due to lack of awareness they don't know where to start it is very imperative we understand sweat and that's why as hyperhidrosis awareness Kenya we are relentless when it comes to advocacy because number one we want to educate you and once we've created that awareness once you're aware that yes there is a sweat issue the next thing is always where is the solution hence awareness without solution or solutions is just awareness If you have any questions regarding treatments if you need further clarification feel free to reach out to hyperhidrosis awareness Kenya you can send us a direct message on our Instagram page at hyperhidrosis Kenya you can also get in touch with us via our Facebook page hyperhidrosis awareness Kenya and subscribe to our youtube channel hyperhidrosis awareness kenya we are also appealing to the general public and even the hyperhidrosis family to support hyperhidrosis awareness kenya so that we can meet our mission and goals with your help we'll be able to you know meet our awareness rollout program as well as you know our our vision which is to provide practical and sustainable solutions thank you very much for supporting hyperhidrosis awareness kenya throughout the years and without you it is not possible so nashukuru sana and apale uh, kwa comment section tafadhali if you have any uh, topic you may want us to address feel free to share hapo and we also want to see your comment hapo share share your comment your your feedback your crit- critique every kila kitu all that is welcomed and from me and uh, hyperhidrosis awareness kenya rajesh ujasiri wako and remember we are in this together peace